This screencast is on the loanable funds market. We've got a different amount here of learning objectives that we're going to look at. The first one is to understand that financial institutions are involved with the loanable funds market. And so as you can see from this visual here, we're talking about the banks when we talk about the loanable funds market. We're going to take a look at the graph for the loanable funds market, and we're also going to see how we apply the real interest rate when we talk about the loanable funds market. We're going to take a look at the connection of the money supply from that market, uh, money market graph and how that affects the loanable funds market. And then we're going to connect the um, demand for money to the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model from Unit 3, and also the loanable funds market. We're going to take a look at how that connects with the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. So when we talk about the market for loanable funds, you have your downward sloping demand for loanable funds, and you have your upward sloping supply of loanable funds. Um, on the horizontal axis, we've just got that quantity of loanable funds, and then the real thing to look at here is on the vertical axis, having that R, which stands for the real interest rate. So here we're adjusted for inflation. And so this is all about those that want to loan money to those that want to save the money. Um, really what we're talking about here are mortgages and business loans when we talk about the market for loanable funds. And so really if we think about this, this all connects with the I in the aggregate demand of C plus I plus G plus XN because we're looking here at loans that businesses will take for capital, for all that capital stock. And then you'll also have um, investments that people will take with their homes with mortgages. If you look here too, this is our equilibrium interest rate where we've got that equal amount of those willing and able to supply it to those that are willing and able to demand it. But if we had an interest rate that was really high, this is where you would have a surplus of loanable funds. Because the banks, because they make money off of loans through these interests, um, they would be totally willing and able to supply the loanable funds. But businesses would not think that this would be advantageous for the company. And so therefore, the quantity demanded of loanable funds at a much higher interest rate will be lower than the amount that will be supplied. So that's where you'll have a surplus there of loanable funds. And looking now at what will shift the loanable fund curves, let's take a look at the supply curve. And so this would be about the banks and their supply of the loanable funds. It is tied to the money supply. And so if you have an increase in the money supply, which we haven't gotten there yet about the tools from the Fed, with, this is with the monetary policy, but if they utilize one of these tools in order to increase the money supply, then what you'll find then is that there's more money that's out there that will be able to be loaned in the loanable funds market. And so that will increase the supply of loanable funds. If you have an increase in the money supply, the nominal interest rate goes down. And likewise, the real interest rate will go down also. Um, that's a good thing to uh, take a check on when you're looking at different problems. Nominal and real interest rates go in the same direction. And so if something is done by the Fed to um, decrease the money supply, then with that you'll have an increase in the nominal interest rate and that decrease in the supply of loanable funds will also um, increase the real interest rate. When you have that decrease in the money supply, we're talking about contractionary monetary policy um, as what the Fed is trying to accomplish. On the other hand, instead of the supply of loanable funds shifting, you have the demand for loanable funds. And so one of the great examples that is used is about government spending and how in order for them to be able to increase their government spending, then that is going to increase the demand for the loanable funds. And when that happens, you see here that you have an increase in the real interest rate um, and you have an increase in the quantity of loanable funds. Um, you could have other things happening too where loanable funds obviously from the C or the I could also impact the demand for loanable funds. But government spending is the one that's utilized the most when we talk about shifting the demand curve. So I thought it would be good for us to take a look now 
connecting Unit 4 with Unit 3. I mean, this is what's so great about ECAT, right? You're able to utilize all these units and work with them together. So this year from Unit 4 is this money market graph where we have our vertical money supply, which comes from the Fed, and then you have the money demand curve, that downward sloping. We have the nominal interest rate. And so when we think about what is happening here with this, what if we were to take a look and say that the nominal interest rate increased? If we take um, a look at what happens when the nominal rate increases, what part of AD is affected? Is it the C, the I, the G, or the XN? You are correct if you said the C, the consumption. Because this is where you have an increase in the nominal interest rate is going to have a decrease in consumption, which will have a decrease in aggregate demand, a decrease in the real GDP, which will take, um, which will lower both the price level and output when we go back to that ADAS model. Now, I will say that the nominal interest rate, it can be used for non-interest bearing accounts for the um, businesses where it can affect also the I, but um, usually we talk about consumption when we're talking about the nominal interest rate, but you could have the I also affected. Now we talk about the market for loanable funds, and remember, this is where we used some examples previous in the screencast. So what, which of the different components of aggregate demand is affected when the real interest rate this time goes up? Is it the C, the I, the G, or the XN? You are correct if you said investment. And so this is where you have an increase in the real interest rate that's going to decrease this time the investment, which will ultimately have a decrease in the AD and the real GDP, which will cause the price level and the output to both decrease. Those are good things to do as you're going through is try to connect things from Unit 4 along with Unit 3.